Hi, I'm Barbara Gale. Let's talk about choosing the correct style of jingled frame drum for your finger style tambourine playing. I have had the Rhythm Inlet, a music retail store for decades, specializing in the folkloric styles of drums and percussion from around the world. And we have sold and taught on all of these kinds of frame drums and tambourines. I have more videos on my YouTube channel here where you can actually learn to play this drum. And it's a wonderful drum that lends itself to portability for travel, but also to be able to walk in a procession or dance with the drum. So please check out those videos for more how to choose whether you're shopping for your very first one or adding to your collection, or if you wanna be sure that the one you already have is the right kind. So let's talk about the pros and cons. First and foremost, notice that each row of jingles is actually two jingles that touch each other and create the metal jingle sound. These drums have two rows of those jingles. And that's pretty critical if you want to play in my classes and if you want to play with this Lane Redmond style. Now that being said, I want to be sure that you know in case you already have one that has a single row, these are still two jingles, yeah, that strike each other to make the sound but a single row. Now I know this one is really small. They do come bigger than this, but I happen to have a small one. It's not the best choice, but if it's something you already have, we can work with it. If you are shopping for a tambourine, don't get this type now. Go ahead and take the next step to get the double row, because that's really important for our style of playing. And I'll get back to how to play with this kind of drum. It definitely has to be the kind of tambourine that has a head. We have to be able to hit the head. That This is what we're doing. This is not the kind of tambourine of Laurie Partridge or Davy Jones. And I think I just dated myself. We are actually making music with the head of the drum as well as the jingles and the rim. The rim is where the frame and the head meet. The definition of a frame drum is that the diameter of the head is greater than the depth of its shell. So all of these drums here are frame drums, whether they have the jingles on them or they are jingle-less, like these frame drums here. This is a djembe. This is a totally different kind of drum and much newer on the planet. These are thousands and thousands of years old. Not these particular drums, but the style is very old and the djembe only about 500 years. So we'll talk about the mylar head or this polyester sheeting that is on this vegetarian style drum or the kind that have animal skin. Usually goat because it's thin enough but sometimes you'll find a fish skin or a thicker one, a calf skin. I think I've even seen like a lizard skin. That's a pretty, pretty large lizard. Not one we'd find around here. So let's start with the pros and cons of the Mylar head. These two are made by the Remo company and they are the Lane Redmond series. The Lotus and the Rick. This is the original Lotus which has a lot more jingles than they have these days. We were getting jingle trauma in our ears from so many jingles when we had large groups of drummers. So it was a good choice for them to lessen the number of pairs of jingles. The Rick, whether it's a mylar head or animal skin, will always have five sets of jingles. And these represent the five phases of the moon. The birth of the moon, the new moon, the waxing moon, growing moon, the full moon, your fruition moon, the waning moon, dissolving moon, and death, no moon at all in the sky, the dark night before the new moon, 
is born again in the sky. Pros and cons of mylar head. The good thing is that it's not affected by temperature or moisture in the air, like the animal skins are. So they're fairly stable. Although in time, the mylar head, which is stapled and glued behind this ribbon, can begin to creep away from its adhesion and the sound of the drum will go lower and lower as it loosens. The mylar headed drums are not quite as delicate as the animal headed drums, so they are more durable. And this is very portable. It fits easily into a suitcase. You can pack clothing around it. Speaking of durability, here's another Remo tambourine. A, more of a beginner level than the Lane Redmond series, which are a bit more costly. It does have the double row of jingles and a Mylar head. I have had this for at least 20 years, if not longer, and it is so worn. I actually not only played this as a tambourine, but this was part of my drum circle facilitators collection that I took to schools and libraries and summer camps and staff retreats and just all over the place as a drum circle facilitator professionally. And this has been beat on by thousands of hands. So it's lasted a long time. And it's only recently that the sound of it went quite so low. Now I've always recommended this as the best beginner level tambourine. That being said, the quality control of this company has really gone downhill. And we stopped selling them in our store long ago. I used to buy them by the dozen for my classes and workshops. Over time, we simply stopped carrying them because it was really inconsistent. Some of them would have a nice high sound and you want to start with it high because in time it could get lower like this one did. And a lot of them would be low to begin with. And where do you go from there? So we stopped carrying them and stopped recommending them. And it's really too bad. If you are able to go to a music store, preferably a local mom and pop music store, I do have my bias on that, um, but any music store, and you can get your hands on one to hear it. If it's this low or lower, forget it. If it's higher than this, then you've really landed on a good one. This was one that I recommended to all my beginner students for a long time. Another plastic headed drum, this time tunable. These metal bars here allow you to tighten the head or loosen it depending on the note that you're looking for. This was my first drum actually that I bought from Lane in March of 1993. The drawback to these is what is also so wonderful about them. The tuning. These metal pieces are not very comfortable to the hand and they can get in the way of your playing. And so what we often did is we went to the first aid section of a drugstore and bought moleskin, which has adhesive on one side and it's slightly padded and covered it. It's the same kind of stuff that maybe you would put in your shoe or put on your um, on the back of your heel to protect it from the shoe rubbing. And that really helped a lot. And it has its own kind of sound. This one is a Cooperman drum and it also has a mylar head. It was decorated by my dear friend, Nancy, a student of mine who is no longer with us and the drum was gifted to me after she passed, very dear to me. The cool thing about these drums is that it is also tunable, like the Royce drum was, but the tuning system is on the interior. So it doesn't interfere with your playing and it doesn't bother your hand. A cool thing about these also is these half moon cutouts can make it comfortable for some playing hands. My small hands, not quite as comfortable, but it's always a, a, a personal fit 
when you are choosing your drum. Another cool thing about this drum is that the jingles are interchangeable. From the nickel silver lotus style that have this lip on them, if you can see the lip, it's, it dips down in, into a valley and then comes back up again, just like the lotus jingles do. But the, the jingle down here are the Rick style jingles, the brass jingles, and they are more of a clamshell like they come together like this and they have a much different sound. So here's the Rick style, clamshell style jingle. This is the nickel silver jingle. A really different sound. All of these plastic headed drums have a different treatment on the surface. Some of them are rough, that give you a, a nice brushing sound if you wanna use that stroke, which I haven't covered yet in my classes, but I will. Or this one, also a Renaissance head. Mine, except that it's got the decorative ribbons glued to it. Much smoother. This one, no texture at all. Very quiet. The Remo TA5210. The jingles on this drum are a chrome steel. They've just started to rust a little bit a few years ago, and I do live in a humid climate. But they're much smaller than the ones on the Lane Redmond series or on the Cooperman or on any of the Ricks. And while they do have a little bit of a lip, some of my students found that the thumb on the back just wasn't as comfortable a little too small perhaps for their thumb size or shape than the larger jingles. So again, it's always so important when you buy any musical instrument to put your hands on it. And I understand that if you're unable to go to a store, for instance, right now, it's July of 2020. I don't know when you're watching this video, but many of us during this time of COVID are not shopping in stores. Um, and we, we need to order online and that's okay. Or you may live someplace where there really isn't a music store that has any of these. So you may not have any access at all. So it's understandable for sure. So let's talk about the Rick and the animal skin drums. The Lane Redmond Rick is mylar head. Very different jingles. They are the clamshell type. A much drier sound than these. They also add a bit of weight to the drum. So although the Rick is smaller than the Lotus, the Lane Redmond Rick, the Lane Redmond Lotus, the jingles are larger and they are heavier. So it adds a bit of weight to the drum. And that's something to consider since we are balancing the drum on our non-dominant side, which may not have the strength and endurance that our favorite side has. And we are new to this instrument and just like when we learn anything new we can fatigue so the weight is something to consider depending on your ability to maintain balancing the drum here this egyptian rick with the beautiful inlay also has the clamshell type of jingles but they're much thinner so much lighter weight Goat skin, the pros and cons. Well, it makes for more of a traditional drum. They didn't have mylar hundreds of years ago and thousands of years ago when this drum was first being played. For many people, it's more aesthetically pleasing. 
And I personally love these drums. There are some drawbacks. The animal skin is really susceptible to humidity or lack of humidity in the air. It's not so much about temperature, although the temperature can affect the humidity. They are simply glued, they're not stapled, and in, in hotter weather, the glue can start to get soft, and therefore the drum head, which is very tightly stretched over the frame, the edge of the drum head can begin to migrate toward the center of the drum, and it can get loose and unglued, and it's really not easy to re-glue the same head back on because you don't have anything to pull. So you would have to have it completely reheaded by a professional who has enough animal skin to, to pull and then use bands and clamps to hold it in place while it dries. And that's not cost effective since they're not expensive drums usually to begin with. So if you live in a drier climate, this might work for you, unless the air is so dry that it's sucking all of the moisture out of the skin. Just like if you live in a desert, you probably use a lot more lotion on your skin to maintain moisture. Your skin really dries out a lot more frequently. And same thing with the animal skin. It can get so dry that it will again shrink the skin and pull the edge of the drum head off and then it, separ it can separate. That's happened actually when I taught a workshop in Colorado, unfortunately. I thought, great, we can use animal skin drums and some of the students did have that kind of drum head separation. The other thing to consider is that if the glue is really strong, if the head is thin or has a weakness, the head itself can actually split wide open in the middle of the head somewhere because the, the dry air has really sucked all of the moisture out of it. So it can be, that can be a real drawback. If you live in a climate that has some humidity, but you play indoors and there's a bit of climate control, that might be the ideal situation. I live in a very humid climate, and if I were to take this drum outside, within a short while, the skin would really relax in the humidity and it would just sound like cardboard. It gets so loose as it absorbs the moisture, it really relaxes and it can actually buckle. And even in the Northeast, where I lived and had the Rhythm Inlet for years, um, some of my students who had animal skin drums if we held class outside or we were doing an outdoor performance, they found that if there was just the right amount of humidity in the air, it would be absorbed by the animal skin to the point where it could buckle. So it's a little touchy, it really is. So if you wanted to expand your collection, um, definitely have an animal skin drum to be able to play. It's very enjoyable and more traditional and quite beautiful and most of them are affordable. Some ricks that have goat skin head are actually heavier. This one I bought in Egypt. Jeff and I traveled to Egypt with Lane Redmond in February of 2001. It was an epic adventure, if you can imagine, the beginning of 2001. And while we were seeing all the sights and it's part of part of the culture there, if you are traveling through Egypt, you have to go to the carpet store and the papyrus store and the alabaster store and the perfume store and boy the day finally came when all of us 20 drummers and percussionists got to go to the drum store and it was a frenzy and Lane actually played this drum for me because I asked her well what do you think about this one would this be good for me and she played it and I fell in love with it beautiful inlay with birds so quite unique. It has a lot more weight to it than this Egyptian drum. And I can't really talk about the cost because I don't remember what I paid and it was not in 
US dollars. And one more thing to note, actually when I purchased this drum, it did have fish skin on it, which was outstandingly unique. Um, but once I returned to the Northeast where I was living at the time, immediately the, the fish skin broke. And my husband Jeff, who was a professional drum reheader, had to rehead it and put the goat skin on it. So this is not the original head to it. Now here is a very inexpensive wood frame animal headed drum. And this one is goat skin as well. And as you can see, an artist painted it. And I couldn't resist, um, even though the sound wasn't terrific, it is playable. I had to get the drum with the moon on it, and it's quite festive and decorative. And some of us obviously do like to decorate our drums. And whether you are decorating the animal skin or the mylar head, that could make a difference in the sound quality and some paints just simply won't work. What Nancy used was a Sharpie marker and as you can see on her drum head, the Sharpie did not run, the ink did not run. However, on my fiber skin headed drum, the Sharpie did run. And then I glued a little bit of red ribbon pieces onto it. These rectangles are, are actually double stick taped pieces of ribbon that really didn't affect the sound too much. This artist used an acrylic kind of paint that's quite flexible and you need for it to be flexible because the drum head is being played and it's reverberating, it's vibrating as you play it, it's moving. So if you use a paint that has any three-dimensional quality to it and it's stiff, then that won't work at all. Um, depending on how thick the paint is that you put on it could affect the sound. So I can't really speak to that too much. I haven't painted my drum ever myself, but this one does have quite a bit of paint on it and it is low. It could have originally been a low drum. The skin seems quite thick, even for goat skin and so that it could have originally been low. But even if these are unpainted, and you can see the metal tacks holding it and it's glued as well, these inexpensive, very lightweight drums are always a good choice for beginners as well, as long as, again, you're playing in a climate controlled area that has just the right amount of humidity, but not too humid, just the right amount of dryness, not too dry, a real Goldilocks kind of climate, one that you might feel comfortable in. So what kind of tambourine are you looking for? Do you already have one and are here to double check to see if you have the correct type? Or are you shopping for your first one? Or exploring some options to expand your collection? Let me know in the comments below where you're at in your tambourine playing adventures. And if you'd like to know more about how to play this drum, please check out more videos on my channel where I'm actually giving lessons on the finger style tambourine. This is the Lane Redmond style of playing, my teacher. Um, and I've had many teachers, but I still always resort just to this style. It's my favorite and I've taught thousands of hands how to play and it's a beautiful instrument that lends itself to processions of especially women, that's the, the herstory of this drum, but anyone can create a procession or dance with the drum. And it's a wonderful drum that lends itself to portability for travel. So please check out those videos for more. So let me know, are you shopping for your first tambourine or looking to expand your collection and exploring what the options are and the pros and the cons? Or do you already have one and you're here learning about the differences and perhaps wanting to know if the kind of drum that you have is the correct style? 
for taking classes. So if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can know when I upload new content and leave me a comment below. Tell me about your drum and your drum adventures and what you're searching for. Let me know if you have any questions about the drum you already have or the drum that you're shopping for. I'd be glad to help you out. And I'll see you next time in the next video. Until then, may your days be in rhythm.